Well, now the rapid rise in the value of digital money or virtual cash. Bitcoin can be used just like regular money and its price has reached an all-time high. But while many are investing in the cryptocurrency, experts warn it won't hold its value forever. More from Lucy Polkinghorn. You can become extremely wealthy with Bitcoin. You pay your bills, credit card bill, your power bill, your rent with Bitcoin. So I've transferred it to my bank account. I've, you can use it for anything. You can't hold or touch it. It's just an abstract concept, a digital entity derived from an algorithm. Yet today, one Bitcoin was valued at an all-time high of more than 10,200 Australian dollars. It is definitely one of the biggest transformative technologies to the world of money that we've ever seen. I've probably put in about $6,000 so far. The plan is hopefully by the end of the year I'll be withdrawing like a second income um, from passive cash flows. Fitness studio owner Dee Heath invested in the cryptocurrency in July this year when one Bitcoin was worth around 2,600 Australian dollars. By October it had blown out to 7,000 Five hundred dollars. So it's probably around sixteen thousand. Um, so I'm really stoked. Really stoked. So you've made ten grand in three months. Yeah, I know it's awesome. Hey. <laughs> Bitcoin is a cryptocurrency, the first of its kind. Rupert Hackett, CEO of Bitcoin.com.au, explains its humble beginnings. So the first exchange that ever happened was 11,000 Bitcoins for a pizza. This was the first time that it ever had any monetary value. Before that, it was just a crazy idea. No one thought it was worth anything. Bitcoin was invented in 2009 by a person or a group using the alias Satoshi Nakamoto. But no one knows if it's a he or a she or where they come from. But whoever they are, they're sitting on an estimated five to ten billion dollar nest egg. Until recently, people believed this currency was favoured by criminals, tech nerds, high-risk investors, even terrorists. But that's all changed. Over eight years, it has never had a security flaw within the protocol and it's starting to gain integrity. Bitcoin isn't just traded, but can be used to pay bills and shopping and can be turned into cold, hard cash. Joe Richards from BitRocket established the first Bitcoin ATM in Australia. There are now eight, with another 30 on the way. You can install that just from the App Store and straight away you'll be, uh, you'll be up and running. One Bitcoin can be broken into a million smaller bits, so you don't have to withdraw or invest its entire value. In Australia, 10 to $20 million is traded daily. The technology that underpins Bitcoin has around 10 to $14 billion traded every day globally. At the end of 2016, Bitcoin was valued at $12 billion. As of October 2017, the network value of Bitcoin was estimated at close to $100 billion US dollars. And the total value of all cryptocurrencies is roughly $180 billion US. Other digital currencies like Ethereum and Dash are also making their mark. But Bitcoin is the biggest and most valuable. So what has caused this exponential surge in the value of Bitcoin over the past 10 months? It's a perception that we all agree that something has value and we're going to use this in exchange of other things that have uh, commodity value. If more and more people start to accept Bitcoin as something of value, it will drive the price of Bitcoin higher. Eric Lim, Senior Lecturer at the School of Information Systems and Technology, University of New South Wales, warns it won't hold its value forever. A lot of countries will be exploring this initiative of going digital. Once that happens, people will perceive that the Bitcoin and the blockchain community is, is going to diminish. Yeah, I believe the, the, the value of Bitcoin will drop. While Rupert believes the future of finance is far bigger than Bitcoin. In the future, this could transform how we do commerce as we know it. But that could take years, even decades. So in short, you may not be too late to take a gamble on Bitcoin. But the advice is to only invest what you're willing to lose. How can you regret it? <laughs>
And of course, it's always a good idea to talk to your financial advisor first. Lucy Polkinghorne with that report.